Okay, part two of designer uh, advice and inspiration. Um, my part one was my creativity in London leading up to coming to Laguna, back to Laguna, having a baby, and opening my first boutique. So I opened my first boutique with somebody, another woman, and who I love, my mentor, right? Didn't work out. Kind of ruined our friendship. I would advise being careful about doing something with someone else because there are a lot of expectations on both sides that surface after you are in the in whatever you're creating together so start small you know start smaller um it, it i mean actually it turned like listen everything if you believe and you are passionate about what you're doing everything will turn into a win for you. Did you hear that? If you believe and you are passionate in what you are doing, everything will turn in for, to a win. You stay diligent, you stay constant, and it will, you will win. It might not be the win you knew, but you will win at it. So honestly, I got so many three-day notices to pay or quit. Do you know what that means? That means the landlord, I couldn't pay the rent. The landlord would come up. I was a single mom. I was like, I love his father, but he wasn't helping, okay? So that's a side note. That's a single mom story. Um, my landlord would come up and say, I need, you pay in three days or you're out, right? That's a legal notice. That's the first notice they have to give you before eviction. So before he takes steps on eviction. So. It, I would thank him when he gave me a three-day notice because it meant I had three more days to get the money. So it was hustle, hustle, hustle. And, you know, I was doing my best to be the best mom I could be. And I was stressed out. But I, I didn't want to go work for... I was stubborn. I was stubborn. I didn't want to go work for somebody. I didn't want to not be with my kid. I didn't... Um, I wanted to make this work. I was passionate about what I was doing. So... Um, I mean, I'd say it was several years of that kind of energy, but I was creating something. From the little store I had, somehow I moved to a big store. And um, it, a big store on the main street in Laguna Beach. And I don't know how that happened. I just told the guy, that's my space and I'm getting it. Don't ask me. I don't even remember how I had the money. What I do remember is the electricity was turned off because I couldn't pay the electricity. And I remember a customer coming in and I had to explain that, uh, oh, the lights were out in the area. You know, like I had like those kind of stories. So that was before, that was like, I think I was in that store for about a year. And then I met one of the loves of my life who is an artist. And he is like another level of, um, information and support that he gave me to move me on my journey. So at that time I had, I was only doing a small rack of my own collection and I was buying pieces. Now remember I had worked in retail most of my life on and off since I was 12. So that, that sort of scenario made sense to me, you know, get, go buy stuff, other people's designs, and then mark them up and then put them on sale. Like it's kind of a crazy, it doesn't make any sense to me now because basically you never make money. You're just moving money from one place to another, <laughs> right? Because you come out even if you're lucky. So he was like, he's an artist, right? He's like, why are you selling other people's things? And it's a great question. I was like, why am I selling other pieces, people's things? And 9-11 hit. And so I just, him and I, he was such a, he was working on such a grand scale. He would do these giant, amazing paintings. And so he was like the, con where I was like the consciousness, oh, I can only buy two because I'd been in like kind of poverty, lack consciousness, which was real, by the way. He was like, we're buying it all, you know, and there's a hundred. So he started with, uh, well, we started doing denim, reworking denim, and then he found Somebody was selling all their extra leather hides. They were going out of business and he got them all and just dumped them in my studio. I had a studio that was my garage. It was a large garage at the time. 
And so I just started really um, utilizing my youth and what clothing I was wearing during my youth. And a lot of it was the wraparounds. I was, it was vintage lace. It was um, Indian bedspreads. I was reworking uh, vintage t-shirts at the time. Like I would cut them to fit better and I would do whip stitching. And, and um, the leather became the ties of the wrap dresses. I, and I, to this day, they're one of my signature, um, they're, that's my signature piece, you know? And it actually makes, you can imagine from a vintage piece of lace, with a leather tie kind of like makes it rock star instead of Missy. So he was instrumental in really supporting me to help me believe in me. And we need each other, like we need our friends. I remember him saying like there was some crappy thing I made and he's like, just keep going, you know? And we need our friends, but we need ourselves. Like you need to believe in yourself. and. I had, I still to this day have so much joy in my studio. It put like, like right now I'm not near my studio. I live by coastal now. I live in Miami and Laguna and um, I'm missing that creative energy that um, I get from being in there. I almost feel like I could cry. Like I really miss, like it's like a lover, you know? And, and that's the other thing. Be careful. It doesn't replace a lover because eventually with um, the man I was with, the artist, you know, our, we started butting heads, you know, because my designs were doing better than he pulled out of doing designs, which was fine. I mean, it was fine because he had all this amazing art on the walls and, you know, it kind of became competitive and that's, it's too bad. So although going into business with my mentor at the beginning gave me the strength to know that that's what I wanted to do. When she pulled out, because I didn't have anything, she took all the fixtures and everything, which is, it. They, she owned them, so it's fine. I'm not a victim by any means, but it made me really get stronger to say that this is what I want. And then with my boyfriend, you know, it, I would say like, it's great when it's great and it's not great when it's not great. Because if you have an argument and you're in your business, like nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants that energy in there. So, you know, it's having a life, right? So I'm going to take you, this is chapter two. So this is up to, um, after he and I split, I got the boutique on my own and I was doing trade shows in New York, I did um, a fashion show in, uh, was that in that store? No, I did, I did a bunch of trade shows. I did Paris. I was doing Miami Swim Week. I, I was doing a lot of those. I pretty much, I broke even at all of those. I had some big wins. I had exposure. As a designer, you need to be seen. You need to be seen somehow, okay? So sometimes if it's being in somebody else's boutique, but you don't, you're not actually you broke even on that. That's okay because your name is out there because you're getting yourself established. So that was up to that point when I closed my store and what really happened at that time, the boutique business changed because the internet came. So before it was so much fun. It was just like people coming in all day, like busy meeting new people, talking to everyone. Then the internet came and things started to change. Suddenly everybody knew about Laguna Beach. The people started to change. The people that were coming in had ice cream cones. You know, there were the LA people weren't coming down there anymore because it, there were too many tourists. So that was a transition out of the boutique retail business as we knew it. And that was 2011, I think, when I closed that business. I did not close it uh, scot-free. Um, I definitely owed some rent. Uh, the landlords knew I was a good tenant. Uh, not all the time, but I always paid, right? I might have paid late, but I always paid. Once, once I got into doing my design only, the markup on that is you're selling wholesale to retail. You're missing, no, you're selling costs to retail, you're missing the wholesale number, right? So if it's $10, you would have wholesaled it for 25 and then retail it for 50. I'm selling it 
ten dollars to fifty so the markup the margin is so much better but you have all this overhead so everything weighs off again if it's your passion you must do it and if you want to give up do it a little bit more before you give up listen I pretty much have done everything I wanted to do and it hasn't been easy but I don't have any regrets right now I don't have any regrets so I'm gonna leave you on that and we'll go to the next uh, the next episode thank you so much for watching and if I can help anyone in any way that I am interested in that I'm interested in you learning from my experiences so that you cannot make the same mistakes so that maybe there's a little grain and you go oh shoot I was just gonna do that I'm glad she told me maybe that's not the right direction so or she told me to try it that way and I, I tried it and it worked just I I'm here like DM me message me whatever you need I really appreciate you watching my channel I hope I'm bringing value to you as young creatives and um, next chapter